It happens in most of the international meetings because the host has to hug so That's many. That's Anthony Albanese, Albo, walking down the political red carpet. Big friend of India, uh, member of the Quad, loves cricket, likes uh, India, close friend of the Prime Minister. And, Anthony and, Albanese. And one of the transformational relationships again is India His Australia. Excellency, if you remember the Prime Minister Mr. when Anthony he went down Albanese, and there was the first Prime Minister in years to Prime go Minister to Australia. Of Australia. Uh, you know, Australia was seen as a country suffering from what one writer called the tyranny of distance. Uh, you know, geographically far away. But and they've been pushing in, back on China very hard. Yeah, but if you look at it uh, strategically, with, with Quad commercially, uh, you've got major Indian companies now with large investments, the Adani Group has a, 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 a large investment in mining, been controversial, has led to opposition within Australia, but it is still seen as uh, as one of the major oh, Indian investments in Australia. And now you've got other investments. Oh, he's stopping to talk a bit uh, to uh, Al Anthony Albanese. Uh, and, and, and they were there, if you recall, even a few months ago or earlier this year when there was an India-Australia test match in Ahmedabad. They oh, went together. Fact, I, I, uh, 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 you know, they did a sort of round of the stadium uh, uh, in, in their little buggy, which was quite interesting because one thing that unites Justin India and Trudeau Australia is there. We is, saw how is, warm is the embrace Trudeau, was for Prime Anthony Minister Albanese. Of Canada. Let's see if it's the same now that Justin Trudeau is walking in. He came with his elder son, Javier, uh, walking down the political red carpet to meet uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi. So he's got a nice namaste happening. Let's see if there's a jappi as well. I doubt that very much. Uh, he's got a handshake, uh, tap on the shoulder. <laughs> But, but possibly, this is one of the more contentious relationships that India has in recent times. India has a lot of concerns with the way uh, Canada has seemed to have become a, a center for Khalistani uh, elements. And therefore, uh, there's a concern that has, has Canada done enough to rein in... I, I presume there's a bilateral, there was scheduled to be a bilateral on Sunday. bilaterals. Now Lee Xiang is going to come. There will be a pull aside. Of, there will be a pull aside China where this is expected to be will discussed. Be the next guest and watch very carefully every minute element of the body language at play. The Premier of China stepping in for the President Xi Jinping who didn't go to Jakarta, hasn't come to Delhi. Okay, Ursula before Vaughan, that, uh, yeah. Leyen of the EU is here. We, we had an interview with uh, the European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen. Uh, she's coming down right now to meet Prime Minister Modi, has been uh, head of the European Union since July 2019, first woman to be serving in this role, uh, in, responsible for the legislation impacting 450 million Europeans. She was born in Brussels. Uh, former G Defence Minister of Her Germany, Her long-time ally of uh, Chancellor Angela Merkel, President one of, of the, the European staunchest supporters uh, of Ukraine in this uh, unprovoked war from Russia, India and EU, marking 60 years of their bilateral relationship. The EU is one of the members of the G20, so there's 19 countries and then there is the European Union. His Excellency, Mr. Charles Michel, President of the European Council. Charles Michel from the European Council. Oh, he's the one who said that, is it? President of the European Council, responsible for defining the political direction and priorities of the European Union. The European Council is a part of the executive of the European Union. This is really the informal forum where EU countries uh, talk amongst themselves. Delhi is just looking very glorious this morning. You know, you've got a nice breeze that's blowing. Uh, you know, this is Olaf Scholz, Chancellor of Germany, just coming out. I wonder what happened to the eye. Do you know, uh, Rajiv Doga? 
and surgery. Yeah. And surgery. Laugh shows. He reminds me of Moshe Dayan. <laughs> he does, but you know, he again, when you look at Germany, you think of Angela Merkel because she was so dominant for such a long time. And he is having Germany. to come out of her shadows. Not easy. You know, when you succeed someone who's been around for so long, it's not easy to sort of reposition your country or, or yourself. You know, he had a, a jogging a, a accident and the interesting thing is there have been lots of memes in Germany about his eye patch and he's been making light of them. So he's been very sporty about them. He posted a picture, he picked this up while he was jogging uh, over the weekend <laughs> yeah. and that's where he got this uh, pirate style but, uh, but it's eye an patch. But it's an important he, country. Oh, I think that's the question, that's the most natural question to ask. Modi is also <laughs> asking him, how is your, how is your, how is your. You know, yeah. it's, it's one of the important countries in, in the, it's even more important in the context of what happened in Ukraine, given the fact that Germany is expected to play an important role uh, in the new world order post Ukraine. So, uh, and you expect, as I said, in a post-Merkel world, what role does Mr. Schultz play in terms of building sort of Germany's global reputation? Merkel was successful. He has not been successful so far. Yeah, but it's, it's too early. I mean, I think the jury is out. As I said, when you had a leader who's been there for more than a decade in power, was seen as a very popular, charismatic uh, 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 chancellor, then to succeed her can never come easy. So. Uh, he's at test at home, as many of these leaders are. You know, many of these leaders who are here are going to, in the next couple of years, like Rishi Sunak, uh, face huge challenges at home, whether they can take forward their international image and translate it domestically. You know, including Prime Minister Modi. You know, this is a huge occasion today for him and will be a build-up in a way to establish himself uh, next year in 2024 as well. We'll see, you know, between Chandrayaan a couple of weeks ago and now G20, Prime Minister Modi has the occasion to showcase himself uh, to a domestic audience. Let's be honest, many of these images that are playing out are not so much for the world. They're all for an Indian audience. Uh, we've seen the Prime Minister's face on all hoardings across the country of G20. So whose face would you have seen? No, no, you could have had, remember one thing, the Prime Minister has, in a way, been identified with G20. You don't talk about G20 without talking about Prime Minister Modi. There isn't a poster, a generic poster of G20. It's Prime Minister Modi equals G20 and the hope thereby is, or the Prime Minister will hope and the BJP will hope that that global image only translates into more advantage to him domestically. This is also for a domestic audience to say, you've got a Prime Minister who is taking India to another level on the global stage. I think that's been part of the subtext of G20. Giorgia Meloni is the, the Prime Minister of uh, Italy. Far right leader. Uh, she's spoken very fondly of uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Uh, recently she met with Rishi Sunak, uh, firebrand far right leader serving as the Prime Minister of Italy since October 2022. Her Excellency, uh, first woman politician Ms. to hold Georgia the premiership of Meloni. She replaced Prime Mario Minister Draghi, the academic Italy. economist who was Prime Minister before her. Uh, she was in charge of the youth portfolio in the government of uh, Prime Minister Berlusconi. Uh, she founded, co-founded the Brothers of Italy party which she has led since 2014. And, and, and Mr. Modi will have a special affection oh, for her absolutely. because if and you vice remember, versa. she said that the Prime Minister is the most loved leader in the world. I mean, you know, that's the kind of compliment and I'm sure Mr. Modi will remember. So they, she'll have a particularly warm place in Mr. Modi's heart, uh, given that that's one of the first public statements that she made. Uh, I think it was on the sidelines of a dialogue in those uh, of the Raisina dialogue when she'd come to earlier when this she year. Came here on a visit. Uh, she'd come here on a visit and she said he's the most loved leader in the world. So he, she's yeah, right warmed her way no, to Mr. Prime, Modi's heart. No, but Prime Minister Modi is an icon for the global right. And in that sense, uh, she's a far right leader. And uh, therefore, looking up to Prime Minister Modi is quite natural. Absolutely.